I don't understand why NASA has convinced us that the greatest adventure on Earth is going to Mars. It's not, it's actually in our own backyard. If you like camping, you should become an ant collector or an insect collector. I spent about half the year in a tent. And the other half is spent thinking about how to get the money to go see these beautiful creatures. And for most people, that's a hard sell. For most people, ants are practically invisible. Insects are pests. Why would you want to fund somebody to go and discover a new species of ant? Don't we have enough already? Well, these creatures who we share this planet with is part of the world, are part of these ecosystems which we depend on. This glue, I call them, the insects which hold these forests together, are essential for our survival. When we began in 1992 working in Madagascar, it was clear that I was going to work there for a long time, just because there were so many new things to discover. And I started working with a crew in Madagascar over 10 years ago, and I'm working with the same people today. And this crew I have for the field is like really a family, an extended family, where we spend two to four to six months together, at one time nine months together, in the field, changing locations every five days. And in Madagascar, Getting to a site is more than half the battle. It might take us five days to get to one locality, and we may only spend three or four days there, and then we're off to another location. Walking, hiking, swimming, everything is possible in Madagascar to get there. But this crew has just grown to be the world experts on ants, especially for those in Madagascar, and it's a wonder, a wonder to work with them. At each site, we kind of go through a sequence of, it's like a theater event, where we go through these routines, where we set up these traps, one's called a leaf litter sifting device, where we sift leaf litter, then hang the leaf litter in this kind of white sack that all the insects work their way out. We set up malaise traps, we put out yellow pan traps that attract insects that fly. We do all these kind of traps as quick as possible, because after that chore, we actually can hunt for things, and it's real fun to go out into the forest, and chop into a rotten log and look and see what's there, or break open twigs, or actually look for ants that we know would live under a rotten log or under a stone and kind of guess what we'll find there and be surprised if we find something really new and exciting. We shipped the specimens to over 180 taxonomists around the world. In total, we've discovered about a thousand new species of ants in Madagascar. And during that time, Madagascar has gone through this whole transition of basically, we call it the greening of Madagascar. Trying to get the people to realize that what they have is unique, special, and should be preserved. And there is enormous change in that regard. A great number of new parks are being created, and we're part of that. We're part of that process of actually providing that scientific data about where life is found, and how is it, and why is it important, to help them preserve and choose what parks should be placed in Madagascar. But I keep going back because I want to find something new. And in Madagascar, that seems to be always just around the next corner. And that's what's really fun about being a scientist, is being the first one to, to discover this. And it's a real thrill to be, I remember this last trip, we got back, and sometimes you don't know what you have until you go to the laboratory. And we had the petri dish in our hand, we're looking at it going, you won't believe it. This is a new genus of ant, and it's just so exciting, and nothing can replace that. And that's basically what gets you going and gets you planning, and you forget all about the days of hunger, of cold, of sweat, of walking, where your knees are so sore, you wonder if you could ever dance again. It's actually, what will you find? And that's a real thrill.